In this demonstration, we're going to talk about how to populate your users via spreadsheet into the site. Um, currently, I do have five users sitting in here, but if I need to add those additional users, I can do so through a spreadsheet in the data load section. Um, one thing is kind of a little tricky about the data loads is they do need to be in our specific format to be able to upload properly, so you'll pop into your data load section here under the control panel, click the new data load option, and then learn how to create a new data load spreadsheet here. Typically when I'm first starting out, I will go in and I'm gonna download my employee spreadsheet. And then this gives me my template if I scroll down of um, the items that are required that need to be filled in for your users and then the optional fields you may wanna track for your users. So you can download a copy of this example spreadsheet here, and then I'll walk you through how to kind of set this up from here. So we're gonna open up this spreadsheet here. So first of all, this is my spreadsheet that I currently have with all my users that I need to populate into the site. Um, so if I look at my actual spreadsheet that I downloaded from the site as a template, all these headers need to stay exactly the same to populate into the site properly. So usually I just delete out um, from employee number over and then kind of populate my data from there. This just kind of has a few sample columns for you to see how to properly fill them out. Another thing is if you're not populating certain areas, you can just delete those items out of the spreadsheet and then they will just kind of ignore from there. Um, such in this case, I know that I'm not gonna be assigning HSE or a manager. I'm just gonna use the supervisor field. So I'm gonna delete out some of these other fields with termination date, emergency contact, and just kind of fill in the fields that I want to from here. So once you kind of have that cleaned up, you will need to pull in and copy over the data from there, from your main spreadsheet. So you can do a split screen view here and you could copy and paste the last name into our last name column, first name into the first name column, employee number and so forth. You will have to create a username. Um, so typically we just do recommend first initial last name. If that's not unique enough, you could always do things like their first um, initial dot last name, very similar to the employee number. The employee number also doesn't have to be a number. If you don't have it, you can actually just insert that um, or create one on your own as you see here. So now we have their phone number, so we'll insert that into the phone number section. And our locations and departments, we'll copy into the field office, and then your departments typically go into the line of business code. We'll get into these in just a moment because those will have to be loaded into the site for it to upload properly. Also want to pull over their hire date. their job title. Typically you might insert your email in column J. In this case, I didn't want to email any users since this is play data. So I'm just going to delete that column. The supervisor employee ID, that will need to be their employee number assigned to them, not the actual name of the supervisor. And then Lastly, I have an, an additional column I want to create that's kind of a custom column um, for their region. So I'm going to insert a new row here, and then I'm actually going to title it custom-region. Now, this could be whatever you title it in the site. So uh, you'll see the other columns aren't allowed to have spaces, but if you title the custom field with spaces in the site, you will want to include those, such as date of birth, if you had it typed out exactly like that, it will actually capture um, caps and numeric. All of that has to be exact. So if you do the capital D, make sure that's a capital D on here. Um, those do need a case match. So in this case, we'll create a custom region field 
and then we're just going to copy and paste this data down. So now that I got this transferred over into our template, I can kind of clean it up and get rid of some of these additional columns again that I'm not going to need. Um, typically, you are going to be required to go through columns A through H. And then that way, anything else beyond that is just optional fields. In this case, I'm not using the companies. I'm not using the driver fields. Um, and then I do want to force them to, to reset their password or force them to change it when they first log in. So we'll need to add that in. And then also in this case, I want to wait to send the welcome email until we kind of get the site built out. So I'm just going to toggle this to no for now. And of course, I don't have emails anyway, so it would trigger an error if I left that in there. Um, so now the last two important things is to create an initial password. I usually just do KPA EHS safe one because it seems to suffice all of our password requirements. And then I'll just drag that down and just make it the same for everybody here. The additional option here is assigning them their role. Um, so that is going to come into play from under the site, under the control panel, and you'll pop into your roles and permissions here. And currently there are three starting points. So you have the admin, which has full total access to edit, view, and delete, a manager, which can complete items and view items, but not make any edits or delete anything. And then the lowest level of access where they can really only view their own items and complete their own items assigned to them. Um, so typically, if you're not sure, starting at the employee role and then bumping up access is the best way to go. So in this case, I'm just going to toggle them all as employees down the line. You could apply a filter if you wanted to. And then uh, so we could do that here by doing a filter. And then if you had anybody that was in like a supervisor title, if you want to assign them a manager role, you could do that as well. So we could toggle that to the manager or admins as you see fit. So now that we have our data load pretty much ready to go, I'm gonna go ahead and save this. And then also you'll just wanna make sure that it's in that CSV format. That's the file type we need to upload. So if for some reason it changes, you can always just toggle it back to this one or this one, both of these work. So if it's the CSV or the CSV UTF one, both work, you just save your changes. And then now we could try to upload it from there. Um, one thing to note though, is when you pop in the site for the employees, a few things need to be loaded in their profile list before it will actually allow you to properly populate without triggering errors. So for example, your locations need to be loaded, your departments need to be loaded, the job titles, and then that regions list that we're gonna create is gonna be housed under the data list section. Um, just to show you some of those errors that would toggle based off of that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what it would look like if we did run this. So we're just gonna drag and drop that file. You're gonna go ahead and click the validate button. It's actually gonna check for those errors to make sure you have those items set up in your site first. And since I don't, it's actually going to trigger that and tell you on each row what error the trigger is or which row the error is triggering on, as well as what is kind of triggering the error. So in this case, it's saying, hey, you got a filled office for Houston and water transfer line of business and an unknown job title and a custom regions, and we're not finding those in your site. Um, so that's when at that point I could go to my control panel. My field offices were actually renamed to locations, so that would be here. And now we can pull from our employee load our locations here and actually create them in the site. So you could always go in and manually add them in one by one if you want, or you can, again, use that data load option to populate additional areas in the site. So if I pop back into how to create a data load here, I can lo load my locations, I can load my departments, those job titles, and then also that custom data list that we're gonna create for the regions, 
will fall under here. Um, same kind of fashion, it shows what items are required, which ones are optional, and then gives you that option to download that template so that you can get that created. Um, so I do have these already populated so that you don't have to watch me walk through how to create all of these. So first to start with, I have just the few job titles that we have here, and I'm going to upload them into my site so that they're populated so it's not triggering that error. And you'll actually see in my control panel under my job titles list, it's going to go from zero job titles to now I'm going to be able to have these five job titles. So once it's validated and ready to run, you just click run it now, and then it's going to insert that data right into your site under your job titles. So now if I refresh this page, you can see it populated my job titles area. So that's kind of where that record type comes into play when you're looking at uh, this template spreadsheet here. When it's saying what record type it is, that's kind of where it's telling it where in the area in the site it's going to load to. I actually haven't did the locations yet because I wanted to show you a few tricks and tips here. Um, so if you are doing your field offices, you can copy your whole list here, paste it into your locations here. I'm going to go ahead and drag this down. And then since I have a lot of duplicates, I, it won't allow you to load duplicates. That will also trigger an error for your field offices. So it is smart enough to know and look for that data. So what you'll want to do here is remove the duplicates. And to do that, you can click data here. And then you can click this button over here. And if you hover over it, it says remove duplicates. So you'll click on that. You will want to make sure you toggle on the option for your data has headers because you do have headers there. And then from there, you'll unselect all. And then you're going to just say, hey, I'm really looking for duplicates in the name here and just remove those and leave what's left. So we're going to click OK. You can see it removed all those duplicates, and now I'm only left with my filled offices. Um, one thing that's also important is it will make you create a code. So a lot of times I'll just do it in all uppercase, um, and a quick formula for that is just upper, and then select the cell and hit enter, and now you have all your filled offices created with a code automatically all in up. Uh, uppercase. So it makes it really easy for you to also fix your spreadsheet for the employees to make sure they're all uppercase. So again, it goes off that code and will properly upload. If you had it lowercase, it would error out because it is case sensitive. So I'm actually going to copy and paste values for this so that it doesn't keep your formula on the back end. Now it will actually show Houston there within that field. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now we can upload the locations through the data loader. So we'll pop back into our control panel under our data load here. We're going to click a new data load, and then we're going to add our locations file. These ones are the easier ones to do that just have a few fields that you're populating the employees. Obviously, as you can see, it takes a little bit longer because you do have to have some items in place first before you can properly upload. So now we have our locations loaded from there. And just to show you where that data populated, that's going to house right here under your locations tab under your list. And if you want to get rid of this sample one, I just recommend making it inactive and then you can delete it out. Or you can always edit it and, you know, rename it to whatever one you were using. So now I have my locations in. The next area we want to populate is my line of business. So I am going to delete out my sample one again. And then make this section empty and go back to my data load again. And then load my departments. These ones I already did create uh, the codes for them off to the side as well. Um, them I actually made a little bit simpler. You'll see in just a moment when I get them uploaded. Close out some of these tabs while we wait for that to run. All right, so that's what we're looking for, that green check mark. Now if we pop back into here and refresh our page, 
Now you can see I actually did shorten it a little bit to instead of all caps for the whole thing, I'm, I just made a couple short letters there. Um, so now that we have those loaded, the last one we need to load here is our regions. Up, and we'll actually look at these here. These ones I'll just manually type in this time instead of data loading them. Um, it's not too difficult sometimes when you only have a few. So to create a custom list to tie back to the employees, you'll go under the data list. You're gonna create that region category. And then you'll just enter in your items. Similarly, you could use that spreadsheet if you had a bunch of items, but in this case, I only have four, so it's sometimes faster than setting up my spreadsheet to just type them in. Now I can save this. And then the last part to get it connected to your employee profiles is to actually set it up under the employee settings here. So you will pop into this section. You're going to add a custom field. Normally you might not have any here yet, but this is where we could set up those custom fields. And then again, whatever you title it here, you'll just title that. If it was a text, numeric, or date, you can choose those options as well. But in this case, I created that custom dropdown now on my employee profile for their region so I can tag that back to their profile. Uh, once you get that set up, make sure you scroll down to save changes because this page will not remind you. Um, and then you'll forget to have it there. And then now to confirm, I can look at my profile here. I have a region option now down at the bottom. And if I click edit, that list is populated by those options I manually typed in. Uh, so really great option for you to kind of create your own lists as well. So now that I have those populated, the last thing I need to do is kind of fix my spreadsheet here for my codes here that we assign to each location. Um, so very similarly, I'm just going to insert a new column here and do upper for all of these so it creates that code accordingly that we assigned it in the site. And then we're going to just paste those values here. For the line of business, I just made a few of those. So I did core for corporate, DOT was DOT, polypipe became PP. Rental became REN, all caps. And then water transfer was WT. So it will, for these ones, require the actual code and not the title. So now that I have all of these ready, I usually like to just sort it by last to first. That's just a preference. I'll go ahead and save my changes. And now we should be able to load our data load from there without hopefully getting any errors. So we are going to grab our employee upload here and validate it and keep our fingers crossed that it runs with no errors. Usually we're doing a happy dance internally if we could get it to run on the first load, um, which in this case it did great. Uh, but if it did, it would tell you those errors. Of course, if you have any questions on reading any of those errors, feel free to reach out to our support team and we can help guide you from there. Um, so once you get it run here, you'll just make sure that it says data load run successfully. And now if I pop into my employee section, it goes from that five now to 35 users from there. And then at a later date, when you're ready to push out those welcome emails, you can just filter this to none. It filters all those employees who have not logged in yet because this date tags with the very first they log into the app and or the website. And that's a great feature to kind of filter by and then push out your welcome emails at a later date once you're ready. So you can click on this welcome emailer. And then if they did have their emails in there, you would just scroll down and send to the users from here. Of course, again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our support staff at support at kpaehs.com.